I want us to switch gears for just one moment. For just one moment, I want you to pray for the person whose hand you're holding. That God is going to bless them in an unusual way. Come on, open up your mouth. Begin praying for them. That God will bless their mind. That God will bless their body. God will bless their family. May God will bless their future. God will bless their dreams. God will bless their ideas. God will touch them from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. God will bless them to finally be able to sleep tonight. That they'll feel strength when they wake up in the morning. And we believe it to be so in Jesus' name. Would you clap those hands and thank God. Come on, clap your hands and thank God. This is still our year of answered prayer. Come on, clap your hands like God's going to do it. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I am uh, so grateful to uh, see all of you on Tuesday night uh, because I I believe that fire is breaking out in our church. uh, That that revival is afoot even in our midst. Uh, How many of you just come tonight with a spirit of expectation? Come on, make some noise if you need God to do something. You need God to do something I I hope uh, we've just uh, about 48 to 72 hours uh, left how many of you have already uh, exercised your responsibility in early voting amen we've uh, broken a record over 2 million people have uh, uh, obligated their civic responsibility I'm thankful uh, for you uh, doing uh, that would you help me thank God for our praise team that led us in worship would you give god glory for those who are online tonight giving god glory Uh, we're thankful uh, for them allow me a point of personal privilege uh people who are near and dear uh to me are uh, with us uh on tonight and i'm uh, grateful uh for uh, their sharing evangelist uh ruby and deacon i done made him a deacon deacon uh, Calvin Allen, both those are my family. Won't y'all stand? I'm glad to have y'all uh, with me on uh, tonight. Amazing people, amazing people. Uh, if you got your Bibles, would you stand to your feet and uh, join me in John's Gospel, chapter 7. John's Gospel, chapter 7. Open up your Bible apps. Get to John, chapter 7. Matthew, Mark, Luke. Amen. How you lost on the app? Amen. It ain't like you flipping nowhere. Just go to John chapter 7. Verse 37 is where I want you to go tonight. John 7, verse 37. Once you found it, won't you say, I got it. If you can't find it, say, Lord, help me. Amen. Jesus. All right. John 7 and 37. On the last day of the festival, Jesus stood up and said in a loud voice, let anyone thirsty come to me and drink. On the last day of the festival, Jesus stood up and said in a loud voice, let anyone thirsty come to me and drink. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to preach uh, tonight using as a subject. I got to stand up for myself. I I, got to stand up for myself. Would you look at the person beside you and tell them I got to do it. I got to do it. Look at the person on the other side and tell them you better do it. You better do it. I got to stand up for myself. This is an interesting passage um, because it teaches us something 
that all of us have to come to grips with. But I want you to understand in John chapter 7, something takes place that doesn't happen in the six previous chapters. This is the first chapter where Jesus reveals himself. Where he comes out of hiding. Every other instance in this gospel, Jesus is intentional to tell people, don't tell people. The Bible says that uh, on the last day of this great festival, Jesus stood up and uh, shouted with a loud voice, if there's anybody who's thirsty, come to me and drink. It is uh, really a cryptic message for those of you who are in this room that anybody who is an anointed has a limited time on being hidden. Anybody who is anointed, your time of being anonymous has an expiration date. It's only but so long that uh, a butterfly can stay in a cocoon. It's a limited time that a black bear can stay in hibernation. It's only so long an eagle can stay in the nest. Because when God has given you something to do, he's only going to allow you to be private for so long. Those of you who are born to do something extraordinary, the spiritual fight that you are under is not necessarily drugs or alcohol or promiscuity. When you have been born to do something extraordinary, please hear me, uh, your warfare is sometimes introversion. Because God is calling you to do something public when by nature you're private. Sooner or later, whatever is inside of you is going to fight your natural character. People keep underestimating you because you take high ground. They undervalue you because you don't want credit. They take you for granted because you are okay with your name not being called. Until a defining moment happens where you have absolutely no warning, where God will pull the sheets off of you when you wrapped yourself in the humility God did not bestow. The problem of your warfare is understanding that God called you into something that other people fight for. The stage is not what you want. The lights are not what you desire. The microphone is not what you crave. And inch by inch, God keeps pulling you right to the center of it when you do not feel comfortable being looked at. You do not like being discussed and you'll do anything not to be the center of attention. And they don't understand that my calling is not necessarily shyness. So Pastor, how do I deal in holy boldness when I don't want to cause a disruption? How is it that I am able to shine in an area of darkness and you do not give any moderation to my lamp you immediately make me go into neon. When God gets finished with you, everybody is going to be able to see the light that is in you now comes outside of you. So I want to give you rest. I want to give you peace. I want to give you some level of comfort, of confirmation that the only thing they have over you is flash. 
So they keep bringing up their clothes. Keep bringing up their bag. Keep bringing up their shoes. Keep bringing up how much money they make. They keep bringing up where they live because their shine is not natural. So they have to hide behind what is really dark. And so in order for them to shine, they have to try to put a shade on you. Um, people would be a whole lot nicer to you. They'd be a whole lot more patient with you if they only understood that their greatest benefit is your lamp ain't on. You are thriving in mediocrity because I have not revealed my excellence. Because if you knew what I was really able to do, you would be scared out of your boots. You better be glad I don't want your job. You ought to be happy that I don't have ambition. Whatever I got, I got it accidentally. But if I really put my foot on the gas, all of y'all would be out of position because of the call that's on my life. Great things cannot be hidden. Great anointing cannot be hidden. Great promise cannot be hidden. And I am here to announce to you how, what it is that I don't know if your natural self will be able to digest. What I am here to announce to you is that you only have eight weeks of anonymity. God is not going to let 2025 come without your real purpose being revealed. I'm grateful you've been able to skate under the radar for 10 months, but get ready because a day is getting ready to happen where God is getting ready to turn the light switch on your anointing and folk who try to act like they don't know you, try to act like they don't recognize what's on you, are going to be locked in to the gift of God that's on your life. And the Bible says that after weeks of not wanting people to know who he was, Jesus without any warning tells on himself no lepers are there no blind people are there no hemorrhaging woman is present it's just the end of the festival and something goes off in Jesus to say now is the time it had to have been difficult for Jesus to go all of those years having boundless omnipotence Dionysian power and having to feign like he was normal. Um, you, you really don't even understand the source of your migraine headaches. You, you, you don't even understand uh, why it is that you walk with a clenched fist. Nobody has been able to articulate for you why you grind your teeth in your sleep. People always trying to make you smile. Don't understand why you're so serious. Because they do not have any understanding how much restraint you have to have. To not flow in what is natural to you. Do you, do you know what it must have been like for Jesus to have the power to stop a mudslide by blinking? Do, do you know what it meant uh, to have to contain himself from cursing people who doubted who he was? Do you know how much discipline it had to take for him to turn the other cheek when people are playing in his face when he knows what real power he possesses. 
God help me in here. There's some folk in this room who deserve a gold medal and a blue ribbon for how you've been able to restrict your level of anointing because you could have unleashed some stuff on some people because they don't understand whatever I speak it comes to pass the power of life and death is in my tongue so you ought to be glad I gave you the silent treatment because if I said what I really was thinking a whole lot of heads would have rolled but if I hold my peace and let the Lord fight my battles you operated out of discipline in the areas where you could have been reckless and the Bible says in the 37th verse that in the last day of the Greek festival you don't even understand where the revolution is on the last day of the Greek festival here it is and Jesus stood up and that's all I'm going to preach about tonight that on the last day of the Greek festival Jesus stood up the Greek word uh, for the verb to stand uh, is histamei, H-I-S-T-A-Y-M-E-E, -E, histamei. And uh, uh, it does not merely mean to stand on your feet. Uh, it means, watch this, to establish. So on the last day of the Greek festival, he moved to establish. Uh, it, it doesn't mean just to stand on your feet. It, it means to set a standard. So on the last day of the Jewish festival, watch this. He established a standard. Uh, it, it, it means uh, in the Greek, uh, watch this, uh, to have presence uh, in the face of adversaries. Uh, this word, histame, is the word that is used to describe what people are called to do when they are brought in the court. So I am not just standing, I'm standing on a standard. I'm standing to establish something. And I stand in the presence of those that accused me. And so Jesus, watch this, was setting a standard, hear this, in the presence of people who did not believe who he was. He says, there's a whole lot of murmuring going on around me. Isn't he just a carpenter? Isn't that just Mary's son? Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Can anything good come out of Bethlehem? And so Jesus was standing up for himself. So when it says that Jesus stood up, he wasn't just rising to his feet, but he was setting the house in order. When Jesus stood up, he was establishing a principle and a foundation. When he was standing up, he was saying what it is and what it ain't. And sometimes you have to tell people what it is because they don't know what your boundaries are. Hallelujah. I, I, I don't know where it is that you are, but the reason why you are here on tonight is that some of you have been rolling over and playing dead and you have allowed people to low bar you when they don't understand the standard that is above you. Sometimes you got to stand up for yourself because the enemy wants to see how much he can get away with. And as long as you keep giving him a chin to punch and a back to stab, he'll keep digging in. But the moment you stand up for yourself, everything in the room is going to have to back up because they realize, you know what, you can play with them, but you can't play with me. I am not a toy. I am not a child. I am not immature. I'm a grown man. I'm a grown woman. And when you talk to me, you're going to talk to me with some respect. When you handle me, you're going to handle me like you know I am not regular smeggler. When you are in my presence, don't act crazy because I can act crazy right along with you. I do know how to stand up for yourself. It is interesting. It is interesting where Jesus does it. 
because they're not in a cookout. They're not at a bar. They're not at a family reunion. They're in church. (laughs) The Hebrew culture teaches us that when the rabbi sits down, he's getting ready to teach. But when the rabbi stands up, he's getting ready to execute what he has taught. Let me say it again. When the rabbi is sitting down, he is teaching. But when the rabbi stands up, he's getting ready to move on what he taught. Jesus says, I do not have to teach anymore. I'm now getting ready to stand up and demonstrate the power of God. Sitting is about teaching. Standing is about demonstrating. I think I lost you. Stay with me. Sitting is about teaching. Standing is about demonstrating. Uh, There comes a point in your life where you got to force God to stand up. You get ready to miss it. I got the lesson. You done already taught it to me. Now God demonstrates your power. See, some of y'all are sitting there with your arms folded because you ain't put a mandate on the throne. But when you need God to start healing, when you need God to drive out demons, when you need God to change a situation, when you need God to cast out spirits in your house, you don't need God sitting down. You need God to stand up. And God is saying tonight, if you get up, I'll get up. When I see you start to stand up in faith, I'll stand up in my power. I don't need nobody to beg you to give him glory but you gotta say God I need you to get up you see my mama over there struggling I need you to get up I'm getting ready to lose my son and my brother I need you to get up the bank is about to take my house I need you to get up I'm about to slip back in the drum get up God do something on my behalf he says something <laughs> you may be seated hallelujah oh my god he getting ready to get up don't, don't start worshiping him like that cause I gotta tell you what he said if I be lifted up I'll draw Come on, if you need him to stand up, I dare you to put your weight on it. I I dare you to make him get off the throne. Make him do something on your behalf. Push him to get up for you. Sitting down. (laughs) Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, he getting ready to get up. Don't look now. He's getting up. While on others thou art calling, please don't pass me by. He's getting ready to get up. um, You may be seated. He, um. Hallelujah. Oh my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Be seated, please. Oh my God. Hallelujah. I give him glory. I give him honor. Hallelujah. I give him praise. I'm thankful under him. I, I got to bless his holy name from, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same he's worthy to be praised hallelujah you may be seated hallelujah you may be seated I gotta ask you a question be seated I gotta ask you a question this is only for a small group in the room small group in the room uh, who was half raised by a grandmother Small group in the room. Those of you who didn't have that privilege, I'll be back to you in a minute. Small group in the room uh, who spent some time 
at your grandmother's house. Yeah. Yeah. Those of you raised by a grandmother, I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready to give you a phrase and it, it's going to immediately take you to childhood trauma. But you're going to understand what I'm saying. Raised by a grandmother, spent some time at your grandmother's house. When I say this phrase, you ain't heard this phrase in 30 years. Yes, raised by a grandmother, spent some time at your grandmother's house. Here's the phrase. Don't make me get up. <laughs> God, I can't hear nobody in here. If you make her get up out that bed, can I tell you, I feel bad for your enemies. I feel bad for the folk that tried to play you and use you and break your heart. God is saying, don't make me get up. That's one of my children. Don't make me get up. I don't play about them. So if you make me get up, it's going to be serious consequences. Because I asked you to do it. Come on in here. Now, you done got me out the bed. Oh. The power of getting Jesus on his feet. I, I, I just need, um, I just need 50 of you in the room, even if you're in the hallway, if you're uh, online at home. 50 of y'all, I just need you to shout out loud, stand up, Jesus. And that's why you, um, you have to look at what happens when Jesus does in that room. Is he stands up. Hear this. When he doesn't have the mic. Stay with me. He stands up and he's not on the program. Nobody deferred to him for two-minute reflections. Because the revealing of who you are will always be a disruption. Your presence irritates and agitates people who had a plan that did not include you. God, y'all ain't saying nothing. When God is on me, you ain't got to speak my name. My gift will make room for me. And some of you, I'm telling you, get ready because you about to disrupt some stuff. They didn't even have you on their mind, on their agenda, or on their program. But when God makes you stand up, everything on the schedule is about to shift. The Bible says that Jesus stood up and declared. He didn't just stand up. He stood up and spoke. Yeah. Let anyone who's thirsty come to me and drink. And whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of their belly shall flow rivers of living water. Jesus, friends, is establishing the kingdom of God in the earth. This is the master telling us what it is and telling us what it ain't. And I want you to notice there is no equivocation in his voice. Uh, there is no Shakespearean dithering as Hamlet did talking to his own father, trying to talk his way out of a confronted death. The words of Jesus are resolute and clear. This is, hear this, a declaration and not a question. If you believe in me, as the scriptures have said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Uh, it is here uh, that you understand that membership has its privileges. If you believe in me, rivers are getting ready to come out of you. This word is not for everybody on your row. It is not one size fits all. 
I need you to hear me with clarity and with intentionality. If you believe in me, rivers are getting ready to flow of living water. Hear this. Anybody can come to him and drink. Syrophoenician woman did that. Anybody can come to him and drink, but it's only when you believe in him that uh, it gushes. So if you only want to drink, come. But if you want a river, believe. Your problem is you are sitting next to somebody who has teacup expectation. God help me in here. When you have a swimming pool manifestation. So they keep looking at what you have. But don't understand to the depths that you believe. If all you believe in God for is a cup. God be with you. But if I need a deluge of his blessings. To so cover and baptize my life. See the stuff that you impress with I'm sick of. I, I, I don't even want regular stuff. I want exceedingly. I, I want abundantly. I want beyond what I can think, dream. Uh, or even imagine. Uh, uh, do I believe Jesus is Lord? Do I believe that he is uh, the son of the living God? Do I believe that he's uh, coming back again? How do I believe that he suffered under Pontius Pilate? Was crucified, dead, and buried. And on the third day he rose from the dead. And sitteth on the right hand of the Father. I done gone too old school for y'all. Hallelujah. How much do you really believe here? I'm not talking about do you believe him for rent on the first. Hallelujah. But do you believe, hallelujah, in the tree of life? Do you believe he was wounded for my transgressions and bruised for my iniquities that the chastisement of my peace is upon his shoulders and by his stripes hallelujah I'm here do you believe that if your mother and father forsake you that the Lord will lift you up do you believe that in the time of trouble that he shall hide me I wish I had a church right through here do you believe that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength and mount up on wings as eagle do you believe that in that last day he's gonna pour out his oil on all flesh and his son and his daughter is gonna prophesy do you believe that when the trumpet sound the dead in Christ is gonna be lifted up do you believe that the blood still works that God is still moving hallelujah 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 I know they don't preach like that anymore but I need you to look at your neighbor tell them I still believe hi yeah 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 I still believe that can nobody do me like Jesus can nobody do me like the Lord come on y'all we might as well have church would you grab that neighbor by the hand and tell him I still believe hallelujah that he will make a way out of nowhere I still believe he's a doctor in the sick room he's a lawyer in the courtroom he's bread when I'm hungry he's cold when I'm naked I still believe if you confess your sin he's faithful and he's just hallelujah you may be seated hallelujah it's a Tuesday night, but I got a Friday night feeling. Elbow your neighbor, tell him I still believe. Hey, you may be seated, please. Hallelujah, I'm almost finished. 
Hallelujah. I told you I felt like having revival tonight. I said I still believe. Give two people a high five and tell them you can't make me doubt her. I know too much about her. That's why I love him so. Jesus is real to me. In the morning, he's real. Real. Jesus is real to me. So many people doubt him, but I can't live without him. That is why I love him so. He's so real. him I love him I love him I love him I love him Hallelujah. Hallelujah. you may be seated hallelujah hallelujah you may be seated Don't say nothing if you don't love him. But if he is the air you breathe, in him you live, in him you move, in him you have your beer. I dare you to open up your mouth right now and shout like you love him. Hallelujah. 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 You may be seated. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Would you be seated? I'm almost finished. Hallelujah. 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 That's when you know it's real, when you don't need nobody to shout with you. But you can do it all by yourself. Come on, y'all, give him some glory right there. Come on, put a praise in his face. He already standing up. What you gonna do with his attention? What you gonna do now that he's pointing in your direction? You have to ask yourself tonight. You may be seated. Softly, musicians, I'm getting ready to close. You got to ask yourself tonight. Why in the world are you settling for a drink when you have access to a river? Did you hear what I just said? Why do you settle for a drink when he's offering you a river? And you keep getting a drink because you won't stand up for yourself. And he says, I want to release out of you a belly of water that won't run out. Because I don't want you to end the year with insufficiency I don't want you to end the year with emptiness I don't want you to end the year with dissatisfaction no more walking around like you were incomplete that is the posture of people who walk around with teacups not knowing that you are about to own a whole river And he gives you the deed to the river only after you believe. You're supposed to be above and not beneath. But um, you keep um, putting on floaters to get in a bathtub. I don't know how you thought you were going to do a breaststroke in a kiddie pool. 
I said, I got something bigger for you. I'm just waiting for your belief system to kick in. Because you have boundless and limitless possibilities. And the only thing that's blocking your flow is you staying seated. If I could just get you to stand on business, something would start to come out of you. The other day, I, uh, I was reading an article in Forbes magazine uh, that, that said something that threw me off. Here's what the article said in Forbes magazine. It says, the whole earth is concerned about global warming. I was with my executive team upstairs early this afternoon. I told them, last three winters, I haven't even been able to wear a coat. Y'all know it's, it's November Friday. Y'all still wearing t-shirts. Your white neighbors got shorts on. <laughs> and I, I wanted you to uh, be mindful of something that I read. You research it on your own. It's in Forbes magazine. That the only place that is not experiencing global warming. Pastor Stokes, you ain't going to believe it. The only place that's not experiencing global warming is Africa. The article said that for years, climate activists have acted on the assertion that Africa is drying up. But in 2019, scientists from Boston University analyzed satellite data and they discovered there's a long-term shift from the drier to wetter conditions throughout the Sahara Desert. BBC News did a follow-up and reported that in the last 15 years, there is evidence to believe, I need you to hear this, there's evidence to believe there has been a recovery of vegetation, watch this, in the Sahara. Y'all just missed what I just said. Vegetables are growing in the desert. God, I got a slow class right here. The BBC journalist said this, almost like he knew I was going to preach tonight. Here's what the BBC, the British journalist said. He said, and it messed me up. Pastor Ruby, you ain't going to believe it. The journalist said, dry places are losing power. Whatever the dry places cut off before, it no longer has authority. And they can't understand what is taking place. That what is happening around the world is not happening in a desert place. Because the strength of dry stuff no longer has authority. I, I, I got to go. My time is up. Our project, all I came really to apostolically announce is that the dry place no longer has power. God, I can't hear nobody. That God is getting ready to remove whatever was in your desert. And a harvest is getting ready to happen. It is amazing. Listen to me. Is they couldn't figure out what was happening because it doesn't rain in the desert. So the water was coming from a different area. People are not going to be able to understand how you are flourishing in the middle of a recession. How in the world are you living like that off of one stream of income? How is God sustaining you when people around you are foreclosing and losing their houses? God said the desert just lost its power. That you getting ready to walk into a season where other people may not make it because all they got is a teacup. But those of you that made up in your mind in this season, I'm going to stand up for myself. I don't know where you are. We don't shout it tonight. But I want to hear the sound of worship of those of y'all that have found the power to stand up for yourself even when you were in a desert place. I dare to lift up your voice and cry out under God like you trust him in a desert place. Listen to me. Hallelujah. 
But I wanted you to understand with that hand lifted is that the, um, the Google Maps are thrown off because from the satellite they're seeing flowers grow in the desert. They don't know what's happening. I want that hand lifted. I got to show you this because they've never seen this kind of color in a desert place. And I, I need you to know that um, there are no farmers in the desert. The seed plot of the plants were always there. They were just always stepped on. But something clicked in the flower that says, I'm not supposed to be laying down. I'm supposed to bloom where it is that I am planted. God, I can't hear nobody in here. This ain't for your pastor. This ain't even for your neighbor. But for those of you, the spirit of God is calling deep unto deep. If you're in this place and you realize after tonight, I got to stand up for what I was called to do. Because I can't roll over and play dead. Would you do me a favor just to upset the naysayers who never thought you would be a rose in a concrete jungle? Would you just give God glory like you don't care who looking at you? Hallelujah. Come on, I can't hear anybody. Your color is coming back. Your smile is coming back. Your laughter is coming back. Come on, I dare you to give him glory. You getting ready to thrive again. You getting ready to grow again. You getting ready to blossom again. You getting ready to be loved again. Stand up for yourself. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray for you tonight. I'm going to pray for you tonight in the hallway, in the overflow, in this room, online. Lift up that hand. I want to pray for you tonight. I pray over every lifted hand that God will give you the fortitude to stand up for yourself. Even if you got to stand up to your family. I can't hear no worshipers in here. I want you to stand up to yourself. Even in the face of the narcissist you're connected to. You're going to stand up for yourself. Even for those of you who are, are connected to uh, people who specialize in gaslighting and manipulation. Come on, I can't hear nobody in here. I'm, I want you to stand up for yourself. I don't care how much money they make, how many degrees they have, what title they carry. You better stand up for yourself. There's something that is getting ready to rise because you set the standard on how you are going to be treated. You set the standard as to what boundaries are going to happen around your life. I don't play like that. Come on, y'all ain't saying nothing to me. You, you can call it a joke, but there's some seriousness behind that joke. I want to stand up for myself. Lift up that hand. Let your pastor pray for you. Lord, I pray for courage, for strength. I pray for perseverance. I pray, dear Lord, that you will block us from detonating the bomb of self-sabotage. God, I pray you'll forgive us for playing the fool, for acting naive, for going along with the program. God, I pray you'll anoint us afresh and anew that we can have the boldness of John in the wilderness that declares a greater one is coming after me. And those of you, your faith comes into agreement with my faith. Would you give God glory right where it is that you are? Come on, you got to do better than that.
I need to do an altar call. I need to do an altar call and I want you to stay with me. Listen to me very carefully. There are seven different forms of abuse. Seven different forms of abuse and regrettably, the church only deals with physical. Yeah. But there are those of you who are in this room who are coming through emotional abuse. Coming through verbal abuse. And it has harped on your self-esteem. It has done damage to your self-image. It has wounded your perception of self. Because you believe the words of somebody who didn't make you. I got a friend in Baltimore that uses a phrase that I love so much. He says, you got to love yourself the way God loves you. Man, I love that thing. Love yourself the way God loves you. I don't know where it is that you are. When uh, we were teenagers, we thought low self-esteem was left for 13, 14, and 15-year-olds. You can be 35 with a broken sense of self. 42 with a broken sense of self. 57, still trying to find out who you are. The biggest lie that we were ever told is sticks and stones may break my bones. <laughs> words are never hurt. Words are hurt you. Come on now. I'm telling you, words will hurt you. Wherever you are in this place and you need God, listen to me very carefully, you need God to rebuild self-love. You have lost confidence in your own ability. You have second-guessed the call that is on your life. Wherever it is that you are in this room, I want you to come meet me at this altar, please. I need you to come. Don't come because your friend is coming. I need you to come. I need to talk to you. I need to build you back up again. Society has made you feel like you're not good enough. You're not pretty enough. You're not smart enough. You're not rich enough. You're not light enough. You're not skinny enough. But God wants you to know you are enough. Would you take two steps forward? I got people coming behind you. Hallelujah. I want every person in this room, would you just stretch your right hand to faith and just shout out loud, you better stand up for yourself. I want, uh, I want you to put uh, your hand on the shoulder of the person who's next to you, on the arm of the sh person whose shoulder that's next to you. You can reach them. Those of you who are graced enough to be not at the altar, stretch your right hand to faith. Those in the overflow, here it is. I'm not even released to go forward yet. There are two more of you that need to be at this altar. I don't care what other people think. Stand up for yourself. People got no idea what you wrestling with, what you contending with. It ain't even from recent scars. You holding on to stuff that happened to you when you were 15. Stuff that happened in the first marriage. Stuff that happened after mama died. Come on, y'all ain't saying nothing. You still looking out the window waiting for daddy to show up. I need you to get to this altar. Weren't treated right by your own siblings. Mishandled by your own aunt. Persecuted by your own mother. I want you to meet me at this altar. There's only one more I'm waiting on. I don't know where it is that you are. I, uh, I speak at at least five to seven different colleges a year. At least five to seven colleges a year. And I ask them, they usually bring me during their freshman week or in the baccalaureate or Dr. King. Black History Month. I always say to college students, drop the major if your parents chose it. <laughs> you got to find out what your passion is, what your drive is, what your call is. Do you know how many people are trying to please somebody dead? <laughs> Did y'all hear what I just said? Still trying to please somebody who can't even applaud. Still trying to be in the good graces of somebody who ain't even breathing. But God says, tonight I'm giving you a peace that passes all understanding. A joy. Hallelujah. Lord, I pray for my brother, my sister who's at this altar. 
perform open heart surgery while they sleep tonight. I pray that tomorrow morning they'll fall in love with what they see. I pray that you'll remind them that they were made in your image and in their likeness. I pray, dear Lord, that you'll have a stranger compliment them in the next 48 hours. I pray, dear Lord, that they will have evidence and confirmation that they are not crazy, but they were called to think outside of the box. Thank you that they are fearfully and wonderfully made. And I pray that not another day of their life will they ever second guess what they were born to do. I trust you for it in Jesus' name. And those of you, you feel that power in this room. Would you erupt in thanksgiving? Before you go to your seats, hug somebody and tell them you were born for this. You were born for this. I want to challenge you tonight. Listen to me. I want to challenge you tonight. Media ministry, partner with me online. Partner with me online. Giving. How many of you were blessed on tonight? How many of you are glad you came tonight? I know it's exorbitant on a Tuesday. I know it's exorbitant on a Tuesday, but it's just what I feel in the realm of the spirit tonight. I want every person who can, every person who will, uh, will you get a seed as close to a sacrifice of 200 as you possibly can? I know some of you are swallowing hard. <laughs> I know you're swallowing hard, but that, that, that's the amount that I just heard. You don't have 200. I don't want you feeling bad about what you don't have. I want you to get that best seed as close to 200 as you possibly can. You don't have 200, you got 100. It's to 200 as you possibly can, as close to it. How close? 199. <laughs> get as close to it as you possibly can. Give LaFive push pay text to give. Thank you, Pastor Stokes, for leading us earlier. But I want to give an overflow expression. Uh, for how it is that God has met with us tonight and ministered to us tonight and dealt with us uh, on this night. Get that best seed. Give LaFi push pay, text to give. All of our platforms are viable, open, and they are secure. If you're writing a check or giving through currency, our ushers will be at all of the doors when it is that we're getting ready to leave. I can't leave this place. I can't leave this place at the high risk of somebody leaving not saved. You leave here unsaved. You are doomed to a teacup. He said the river is reserved for those who believe in me. For those who have confidence in who it is that I am. I want you to become a member of this church. I want to be your pastor. I want to see you grow. I want to see your family grow. I want to see your marriage thrive. I want to see your children mature. I want this to be the last church you are ever a member of for the rest of your life. This is it. Your search ends right now. I, I, I don't want to put anybody on the spot. So can you stand so they can feel like they moving discreetly? Amen. Would you stand for just one moment? Now y'all done operated with all that holy boldness. Now y'all getting quiet. Would you ask the person beside you, are they saved? Ask them, do they have a church home? Ask them, have they given their life over to God? Wherever it is that you are, I need for you to come. I want you to come. I don't want you to go back the same way that you came. Wherever it is that you are, sir, ma'am, wherever it is that you are, would you come? Amen. Did y'all talk to anybody? It looked like y'all just talking to me. Ask the person behind you. Ask them, are they sure you say? You sure you got a church home? Come on, don't lie to me in church. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Would you clap your hands for a saved house tonight? Would you clap your hands if you love your church? If you love your church. Listen to me. If you were blessed. All right, come on, come on. Thank you. 
You done made my day. Pastor, come stand with her. Thank, don't let her stand by herself. It got to be somebody else. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Amen. You sure you ain't saved? Come on, here comes somebody else. Are y'all going to clap for her, shout for her, cheer for her? What is the point of having Shadrach and Meshach without a Bendigo? We need a third person to come out of the fire. Would you talk to a brother that's standing around you? Ask the brother around you, is he saved? Ask that young person around you, do they have a church home? Ask that young adult, are they a part of a ministry where they're growing, where they're thriving? Come on. Y'all better shout for this beautiful brother coming. I'm grateful, 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 grateful. They said it was three men in the fire, but it looked like there's a fourth one. I don't know where this fourth one is, but they holding up the whole service. If you teetering, you trying to figure it out, come on, don't play with us. Come on, she coming from the overflow. Come on, she joining, walking right into the health ministry. Come on. <laughs> Bless the Lord. Search your right hand to faith. If there's anybody else, we'd be glad to have you. We just, we just want to hurry up and have you. Come on. Stretch your right hand to faith. Repeat after me. You're in the right place at the right time. Joining the right church. Serving the right God. And I know that's right. If you know I'm right, give God some praise for these four. Ask that the four of you will follow us this way. Come on, give God some praise for all of them. New birth, would you shout if you were blessed tonight? Shout if you were blessed tonight. Now, next Tuesday, next Tuesday, we are going to be in the sanctuary. I am calling the entire body of Christ globally for a night of prayer. Uh, next Tuesday is the elections and there's a lot at stake and a lot uh, of uh, things that are at work and are at play. Uh, but at the end of the day, the government is on his shoulders. Uh, and so next Tuesday, we're going to all be tarrying at the altar, uh, believing for divine intervention and believing for his omnipotent hand uh, to rest steadily on the nation's capital. Amen. Uh, that we pray that it is not our will, but that his will uh, might be done, that there won't be any manipulation. There won't be uh, any moving of the peanut shells. Amen. Uh, but everything is going to happen in decency and in order. Uh, and so I, I want uh, the whole altar filled to capacity on next Tuesday. I want you to bring your family. I want you to bring your friends. I want you to bring uh, your colleagues and bring your co-workers uh, that we are believing God. Just one hour of prayer. That's what he asked of the disciples. Can't you just tarry for one hour? Amen. And so 7.30 to 8.30, uh, we're going to be at the altar crying out to God uh, that the God of Israel is the God of of America. Amen. Uh, in that uh, he reigns up from heaven above. So make sure uh, that you are in a position. I, I want to ask that you will help me uh, do electronic evangelism. I want you to call all of the members of New Birth, all of those who you've not seen, uh, those you've been uh, missing in Call of Duty, not the video game, uh, but uh, you have not seen them. This coming Sunday, I am rolling out the vision of the church for 2025. Uh, the vision of the church for 2025 and it is important for me uh, that all of you are present and accounted for. Amen. Uh, so make sure uh, that you are there uh, and you are in the building. Amen. Uh, lift up that hand. Let's go to the Batmobile. Let's go. Amen. Repeat after me. Walk with God and he'll walk with me. Talk with God and he'll talk with me. Listen to God and he'll listen to me. Build for God. And he'll build for me. Love God. Because he first loved me. 
Lift that hand as high as you see yourself going. Lift your hand like you know you're going from a teacup to an ocean front. <laughs> Lift that hand like you believe God is standing up for you. Now unto him who's absolutely able to do anything but fail. May God make you sleepless until you help somebody. May God make you restless until you help yourself. May God irritate you until you have enough sense to worship him. And may God bless you until you have to give stuff away. Henceforth now and forevermore. And the blessed people of God said, Amen. Would you do me a favor, please? Do me a favor. I want you to embrace two people around you who you don't know and tell them I'm looking for you Sunday. <laughs>